10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome to Watchman's Cry News from the Wall, your source for the truth and what's really happening today. Hello, my friends. I'm Nathan Liel, and you're listening to the Watchman's Cry News from the Wall, the program where we discover the truth through the fog of the end times. If you're taking notes, the website is watchmanscry.com. And today I have a very special program. We're going to momentarily pause our other series that we've been producing, and we're going to discuss another subject, because today I have a guest, Augusto Perez, and we're going to discuss some things that you are going to want to hear. Now, over the past few months, I've been on a quest to uncover some of the end-time secrets that will affect our lives in the coming future. And this undertaking involves the task to warn my fellow brethren, my fellow citizens, and countrymen that America is sadly now in her final chapters. A final chapter where all of us will witness her metamorphosis into a new creature. It's going to be a creature that will no longer resemble the nation of our forefathers. Folks, it's now happening. And as I watch it, I, I find myself very unsettled. Because I know what she's changing into. And we've been discussing this topic for months. If you happen to be a new listener, these programs can be found at my website, watchmanscry.com. And when you get there, just look in the audio section for the News from the Wall programs that have been discussing these matters. But on these programs, we talk about the end times. We dissect them. We seek to uncover the truth. We look below the layers. We look beyond the deception. We look behind the facade. And... As we do this, there's one thing that's becoming very clear. The narrative of the end times is going to consist of a variety of characters. I know that there are many of you that have studied the end times for years. You've read a lot of those books. And and in many of the fundamental end time studies, the end time characters were written in a manner that included a lot of speculation on how it was going to play out. But now, ladies and gentlemen... The speculation of the past is now being replaced by reality. It's being replaced by the headlines, by breaking news stories that are happening right now. As these things are occurring, most of the population has no clue, and even most of the church has no clue. Because right now, most of the church is sleeping. It's distracted, preoccupied, and disconnected from the divine events that are presently taking place before our eyes in America and throughout the world. Folks, there's a lot of things going on right now. And here where we are in October of 2013, we are living in very, very volatile times. And a lot of you know this. And I know that from time to time there are some of you that may become overwhelmed with all of the quote-unquote negative news. But my friends, right now we can't afford to be unplugging from current events because There are a lot of things that are on the table, even as I speak, right now here in the United States, and any of them can cause an implosion. Any of them. Right now, we are, we're watching this Obamacare debacle that I do not see having a good result. I do not see it having a good outcome. The Obamacare debacle is going to be one of the catalysts that's going to drive this nation into a frenzy of very unsettled citizens, and possibly even into revolt into revolution. And friends, as I watch these things happen, it doesn't look good. And then on top of that, we have the government shutdown. We have the potential for default. And if there's a late midnight hour consensus by Congress and the Senate with Obama on the government shutdown, that's just going to be a band-aid. It's just going to be, once again, another can that they will kick further down the road. And then what? The rest of the world is becoming weary and all the shenanigans that are that are happening here in the United States. They're becoming weary 
witnessing the politics of make-believe and fraud that is being portrayed by the regime and by Congress and by the Senate. And folks, how much longer is the world going to put up with this? How much longer is China going to put up with this? China is the, the bearer and the holder of the largest amount of American debt. At what point will China say, you know what, that's it? I really believe that already the nations of China and India, Japan and other nations that do possess our treasuries and our dollar and our securities, they're already having their meetings behind closed doors. They're already having their discussions. They're already talking about the alternative. It's merely a matter of time. So as I'm watching all of these things happen as a watchman, while I am unsettled, I still have to sound the alarm and attempt to awaken the sleeping. And I am sounding the alarm with great earnest that distress is upon us, folks. And that's what this ministry is about, to notify the people, the masses, and to those that will listen. So my friends, I ask, is the memo of warning, is it challenging you? I hope so. The nation of America is teetering, and it's balancing on its tippy toes, looking over the edge, trying not to fall, trying to maintain its balance so that it doesn't go over the edge. But any day now, she's going to go over. And the thing that I wonder about as I seek God and as I ponder these things and as I digest and incubate all of these matters that I know that are about to face us with reality is, is the question, when is it going to happen? What do you think, folks? When is it going to happen? When is the United States going to go over? And I'm not talking about a particular day. I'm actually talking about at what point in the day will it happen? Which part of the day will it happen? Will it happen in the night? A Friday night? A Sunday night? Will it happen during the week? Will we wake up in the morning with the news? The news that is terminal? That a new chapter has begun for all of us? Folks, as I examine the horizon, it could be a variety of things that display themselves on the headlines. It could be a dollar crash. China could decide that they're tired of the nonsense from the Fed and they could pull the plug. Or will it be a debt default? And if that were to occur, how's it going to play out? What will be the chain reaction of episodes happening in your town? How will you be notified? Will it be with a phone call that awakens you in the night or in the early morning hours? Will it be with an email, a text message? Will you see it on the headlines? How are we going to find out, folks? And aside from a financial crisis, could it be a terrorist attack that gets this thing started? Could it be the grid that goes down, a grid failure? Could it be caused by President Obama pulling the trigger on the Constitution with the final bullet, thereby creating martial law? What will it be, folks? Could it be a natural catastrophe of apocalyptic proportions? Folks, these are the things I wonder about. And if some of you may say, man, Nathan, those are negative thoughts. Why would you think that? Here's why, folks, because we're there. Ladies and gentlemen, any of these things have legitimacy. Any of these items that I just mentioned are possible right now. I'm not just being negative. This is reality. So when it happens, where will you be when it happens? Will you be home eating breakfast? Will you be driving to work? Driving home from work? And if so, will, will you be able to get home? Will your debit card work? Will there be a mass traffic jam in your town? Here's another question, folks. When the event finally happens, will some of you still be playing the spiritual game of pretend? Sitting on the fence? Struggling with that thing? You know that thing, folks? That thing that tries to grab onto you and hold you down? Or when it happens, will you be in victory mode? Will you be in God-seeking mode? Will you be in a a time in your life where you are working to get your house in order, sweeping out the closets of your heart. Folks, I know that I'm asking a lot of questions, but I need to do this because my job as a watchman is to stir your heart to seek God, to not be satisfied with status quo. My friends, there is so much work to do. And I know that that's why a lot of you listen to this program, so that you can be challenged, so that you can be notified, and also so that you can be encouraged not to give up. So my listening friends, please don't give up. 
Don't give up, folks. I know that some of you are tired. I know that some of you feel like you have no more energy and you have no more fuel to continue. But, ladies and gentlemen, when you are weak, then God can be strong in your life. It's just a prayer away. For those of you that may be in a place in your life where you're struggling with some challenges, don't give up. If you're having some marital trials, my friend, don't give up on your marriage. Keep praying. Keep praying for your spouse. Ask God to touch their heart. And I know that you've already been doing that, but don't give up. Don't give up on your loved ones. If you've lived long enough, you know that every human at one time or another has gone through the knucklehead phase. So pray for your loved ones while they're in that phase. And lovingly challenge them and lovingly encourage them. There's hope, folks. And Jesus is the answer. And I know while the news may sound negative and scary, and while some of these programs on the surface may sound scary, my friends, the sole purpose of sharing this information with you is to encourage you with the Word of God. Granted, during the end times, the, the events taking place around us are going to look scary. It's going to be dark in the end times. We're going to be surrounded by insanity and craziness. But while that is happening, Jesus promised that he would be there and he would never leave you. He wouldn't abandon you. He wouldn't leave you alone. He wouldn't leave you as orphans. He wouldn't forsake you. So my listening friend, that's the heart of the message. And while dark days are approaching us, we can latch on to the anchor of our soul. And our anchor is Jesus. He's your anchor, my friend. So give him a chance. Now, Today on this program, it's going to be a topic that is related to the end times. By the way, if you're wondering if this is a continuation of the previous theme that we have been doing, in our News from the Wall series number 17, we've been talking about the metamorphosis that America has been going through in the end times, but we're going to put that one on hold for right now to do this program. So this is going to be News from the Wall 18, and then after this program, we're going to go back to resuming that series. So in the next program after this one, we're going to address some new areas of the continuing theme about Babylon America. But in today's program, we're going to discuss the end time topic of earth changes. But I want to say real quick, if you appreciate these programs, we appreciate and we need your support. Our address is Watchman's Cry, P.O. Box 157, Priest River, Idaho, 83856. Or you can go to our website and contact us there. As I said, today's program is going to visit the end times, and it's also going to include a very dire warning about a potential event that may be approaching this planet right now. If you just heard our previous session, we talked about many of the prophetic dreams that I have been having over the past several years that I have not really talked about. And in the previous session, if you haven't had a chance to hear that, please go hear it because I take a good amount of time explaining some of the glimpses and prophetic visions and dreams that God has showed me over the past several years. And, you know, folks, it's really at times challenging to receive a prophetic dream because as a watchman and a, a servant of God, it's our responsibility to process it and get confirmation, seek God, and seek understanding about it. So some of the prophetic dreams that I've had, sometimes it takes a while doing that. And when I don't hear anything from God. I just put it on the shelf and file it away and ponder it. So in the last session, I brought to the light several prophetic dreams I've had in several categories. And the categories had to do with earth changes, signs in the heavens, coming war, and military occupation, as well as terrorist attacks. So I brought all of those to the light. I shared them. And one of the reasons that I felt that it was time to do that now is because we are seeing developments of things that are spanning many categories. And right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're watching the beginnings of the downfall of America, including the changes that are going to come to America. We are watching the, the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. And a lot of the events that are going to be happening over the next several years are going to play a role in rearranging the chess pieces so that Bible prophecy can be accomplished and fulfilled. And in this envelope of time, God is also showing his people. He's showing his watchmen, his servants, his messengers, glimpses of things that are coming so that we can share them with you 
and so that you can also compare notes because God's also showing many of you glimpses. This is a phenomenon that is incredible. It actually excites me to see that God is moving. His Spirit is waking people with prophetic dreams and visions. So if some of you have had some prophetic dreams and visions of what I shared in the previous program, or if you have seen some of the prophetic dreams and visions personally with what we're going to share on this program, please send me an email. Let's compare notes because I believe God wants the body of Christ to discover together that we are in a very incredible, powerful, and special period of time in humanity because we are at the very end of time and Jesus is coming soon, folks. That's the good news about all of this. The prophetic glimpses do at times seem scary, and I acknowledge that. And I'm about to have Augusto Perez on the program, and he's going to share some things. But as he shares those things, ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of us sharing these things is to motivate, to challenge, and to awaken the people of God so that they can get their hearts right. Because that's the bottom line, folks. We need to be part of the bride that is ready with our lamps full to see the glorious return of, of our Savior. So I have on the line right now Augusto Perez. Augusto, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Nathan. Thank you for coming on, Augusto. Uh, I heard you share some things on some other radio programs, I and mean, you shared some things that they left me with great pause. I was just saying, wow, to myself. And I told myself, I have to call Augusto, and we need to talk about these things. So, uh, Augusto, I know you have a lot of things that God has given you to share with us, so I'm going to give the floor to you, and you can just share whatever God is telling you. But before you do that, can you open up with prayer and just ask God to uh, allow the Holy Spirit to be in charge? Absolutely. Heavenly Father, I just come to you tonight, Lord, in, in prayer, asking to please take control of this program minister, Lord, the things that we're going to talk about tonight, Lord, let it all be done in order, Lord, let it all be done for your glory, and Father, let it be in the spirit of Christ, and everything that I utter, Lord, through my mouth, let it be, Lord, from you, I don't want to say anything, Lord, that is not from you, or that will cause fear, unnecessary fear, Lord, I want it to be by your spirit and through your spirit, so I ask tonight, Lord, that in this program with Nathan, your son Nathan, that you would allow us to flow, Lord, in the flow of this Holy Ghost, and that you would minister, that you would open the hearts of the people, their minds and their ears, that they can hear and that they can see, that they can understand these things that are happening, Father, and that we are entering, Lord, a very critical time in the history of mankind. And, Father, I just pray, Lord, that we bind every spirit of doubt, unbelief, and fear, we bind all those spirits of mocking that I may come, Lord, from people that hear. Lord, I pray right now, uh, I take authority over those things, and I pray that you release your angels, Father, to uh, to take over that, those situations. And, and there will be those, Lord, that are going to open their hearts tonight to you. I pray there will be those, Father, that would um, surrender their heart to Jesus tonight and that they would repent, maybe backsliders that are not living, Lord, uh, their lives right before you. I pray that they would see the light, Lord, and be able to repent, that you would grant them, Lord, the, the grace to repent, and that you would bring them, Lord, to a place where they are begin their walk with you, Lord, the way you ordain it to be. So I thank you for all the things you're going to do tonight in this program, and I bless it in the name of Jesus Christ, and I give you all praise and glory, Father. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Uh, Augusto, before you start, I want to make one quick comment. We've had other programs together. We've discussed certain things together. And in, in the past, when we have talked about certain things, it seems like the enemy is always looking for an opportunity to mock and to scoff and to just find one little thing, one word that they can't agree with. And they take it to try to use it as ammo to dismiss the warning message. And I want to say right now, listeners, if you are a mocker and a scoffer, I just want to say this. Please, and I'm asking this, I'm taking the high ground on this. Please take these things to God. Pray about them. Consider them. And you ask God for confirmation. Because I know that aside from the mockers and the scoffers, there are also others that will scratch their head and and say, can these things be? I want to believe it if it's true, but at the same time, I want to be careful. So if you might be maybe in the middle, also do that same thing. And in fact, I want to say this to everyone that listens to this. Take these things to God in prayer, and you ask him for confirmation. Because right now, that's what I am doing. Augusto, and I said this off the air, 
I'm also seeking God about confirmation about this. I want to understand it because I do not have full understanding yet about these things. But at the same time, if this thing is a warning from God, woe be it for me to not allow you to uh, share these things because I don't want to have the blood of the innocent and victims on my hands. So as a watchman, anyone that needs to sh uh, blow the trumpet in Augusto, you have enough seasoning with me and, and I know your spirit. I know that the Lord shares with you and you're very careful. You take time to make sure when you hear things from God. In fact, you're like me. Some things you hold on to for years. So this thing, you really felt the need to share it. So I'm going to go ahead and let you just start sharing, and, and let's just see where the Holy Spirit takes us. So, Augusto, what has God shown you, and what's going on? Well, thank you, Nathan, for allowing me, first of all, to be on this program with you and to share this with the precious people. You know, I, I just thank God for the faithful men of God out there, you know, the watchmen that have, uh, you know, radio shows and a, a blog talk radio and platforms that allow, you know, um, someone like myself, you know, I don't consider myself anything big i am the least of the saints but i do know one thing i know the lord okay and i i do hear from him i i have received many precious things from the lord and so i just want to thank you nathan for allowing me to share on your program and um the things that i i'm going to share i want to first lay a foundation of, of why i am doing this okay so that no one begins to say well you're just trying to uh, cause fear augusto you're just a uh, fear monger you're just trying to you know rouse up the people you know and and this is not what i'm trying to do at all people that know me and have heard me in the past no that is not uh what i do i don't like to do that if i speak on things of this nature is because i really in my spirit i really believe that these things may cause a a harm to the you know to god's people that many will be caught by surprise and if they're not forewarned so one of the main uh, duties of a watchman is to warn the people when they see the judgment coming. And uh, this is what I'm doing. I'm not doing anything else. I'm just acting like a watchman, just like you do, Nathan, and others. When they receive something strong from the Lord, they share it. And that is what I am doing, okay? Why am I sharing this type of message, which you're going to be hearing shortly tonight? Well... First of all, I need to back off and share some of the things that I have been receiving from the Father for some time now. I can go back to the year 2004, okay, when I was in Ohio. And all of these uh, dreams and visions are posted on our website, theappearance.com. You can read them. They've been there for a long time, okay? Now, in 2004, I was in Ohio. I was conducting meetings there, and... Um, one night, I had a very powerful experience where I saw three stars. They were in the heavens. I called it the vision of the three stars. And they started writing in the heavens like the heavens was a blackboard. And uh, what they were writing was not very nice. It was, uh, it was written in kind of a, an ancient tongue like Hebrew or Aramaic. And the, the things that they were writing was cataclysmic event, end time events, okay? End of the world stuff, if you know what I'm saying. And uh, as I was watching what they were writing, I began to see this like a movie. I began to see it being played out in front of my eyes like a movie. And I began to see earthquakes, gigantic earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanoes erupting. I began to see it was like a like a civil war in the nation, like brother fighting against brother. I began to see a, a military men begin to uh, kill and destroy people. I, I even saw alien uh, uh, military personnel invading the country. I saw this country being attacked by nuclear missiles. As I saw this, I woke up from this experience. I was in cold sweat. I would not speak about this for a long time. Now, several years passed, I did not share this with very few people, and I continued to have many of these uh, warnings from the Lord about tsunamis, earthquakes, volcanoes erupting, things of this nature, war, nuclear attack. Then in the year 2006, I had a very, very, very powerful experience which I did not share it for some time because of the nature of what I, I saw. I was taken to the very throne room of the Father. And I say that humbly, 
I don't know why the Lord allowed me to, to see that. I'm, I don't consider myself, you know, worthy. But he did. He took me up there, and I saw the Lord. I saw the throne room, and he was sitting on the throne. And in all his glory and all his splendor, and uh, he had the hosts of heaven surrounding him. And uh, when I saw him, all I could look at was his, his eyes. His eyes were so beautiful. His countenance was so impactful. It, I just powerful. I couldn't take my eyes off of it. And um, but as I was looking at him, he drew me with his with his presence. And before I knew it, I was there next to his side. And then uh, he was uh, looking at a book. He looked down, and he had a book on his lap, a very large book. And it was opened. And uh, I did not want to look at that book. I was very concerned about looking at that book. And uh, he looked at me in the eyes, and <laughs> I knew when he did that, he wanted me to look at the book. And he looked back down again at the book. And so when, when he did that, I, I looked at the book, and I read something that was written in the book. And what was written in the book was this word, the end of times. And next to it, was written a date, and for many years, I never share this. I never share this for several years. And, and then even after I shared it, I shared the, the vision and the experience I had, I did not share the dates, because I know how people are, okay? But I have shared it already, and I'm going to share it with you in this program, because of the times we are in right now. The times demand it. And the, the dates that I saw, I didn't uh, calculate this. I didn't come up with some kind of a equation and uh, doing calculations and to come up with jubilees and the end of times to determine, you know. And now this this came to me supernaturally by the Lord by watching something, by looking at something that He had on this big book. So I am not predicting anything. I am not prophesying anything. I am just sharing with you what the Lord showed me. That's all. I am just relaying to you what, what I saw. And what I saw was this big book with the name The End of Times and the dates next to it, which read 2012-2014. And after that, I didn't see anything else. Now, when I read that, I shook. And I told the Lord, I asked him, I said, Lord, is this the end of times as we know it? Is, is this it? And he looked at me and nodded. And I woke up instantly. Well, I kept that very close to myself for many years. Never shared it. Uh, because I, I wasn't about to share it. I just didn't want to share it. Uh, really, I didn't. But eventually I did. And I released just that part of the vision without the dates. And, but the time has come to release the dates because you're going to see in, in a little bit why. Okay, let's fast forward to the present. I have been doing some fasting, as I was sharing with you, Nathan, uh, since uh, Rosh Hashanah this year. I've, I've been doing this now for the last three years, uh, since 2011, okay, since Elenine. And we talked about Elenine, on, by the way, on your program also. And I try to warn the people as best I could. And I mean, uh, I never said that he was going to, the Eleni was going to destroy the earth or was going to cause cataclysm. I never said it in those words. I always said it was a harbinger of things to come. And it may, it could cause problems. Yes, it could cause problems, but it didn't. And I said, if it doesn't cause problems, I will be the first one to say, praise God. And uh, because we'll have more time. So as it turned out, Eleni was disintegrated by some force, whether it was the sun or a space-based weapon, I don't know. But it disintegrated. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. But anyways, thank God nothing happened. So when nothing happened, people rose up. I mean, they started saying nasty things to me and coming down hard on me, you know. And, and basically, I was very distraught because of that, you know, because... All I was doing was trying to warn the people to help them, which I, I know is what you do, uh, Nathan, and you know what a real true watchman does. It, his true, sincere desire is just to warn the people. And um, anyways, I got over it, 
And uh, I learned my lesson, and I learned to be a little more careful and uh, in what I say and the way I say it because of, of the people out there. There's people out there, if I may say the word, they're, they're just downright stupid. <laughs> they're, they are stupid people that have no inkling of what the Spirit of God is all about. They have no ability to discern. They have no ability to discern truth. They, and so all they, go up, all, they go, all they do all day is stand in front of the computer and try to find errors that anybody say, any little thing anybody says, and then they criticize that. They never raise the finger to help any, any orphan, any widow, any hungry child. They never raise a finger to witness to anyone that is lost. Never raise a finger to preach the gospel to the lost. Never raise a finger to help any other ministry, okay, in any other way. Never pray for people. But, all, but they know how to do this. They know how to criticize and tear down. So uh, to you uh, that are like that out there, I'm just telling you, you better watch it because you're treading very dangerous ground right now. This is not the time to be doing this kind of stuff. We are living in very dangerous times not to be criticizing and tearing down people. You better watch it. Be careful. I am saying this in love. I'm not, I'm not criticizing. I'm saying this in love. Walk, walk carefully. Walk circumspectly. Walk softly before the Lord. Because the times are very special. And everyone will have to give an account of everything that they say or everything that they do in that day. And that day is coming fast. I totally agree, and, and I have taken these matters to the Lord many times over why people are like that, why are they so mean, why are they hateful and spiteful and venomous, etc. And what the Lord has shown me is, well, first of all, they're blind. They don't believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They have an intellectual Christianity, and they're fulfilling that passage of Scripture that says in the last days they'll have a form of godliness but deny his power. They're denying the power of God to give these prophetic glimpses and the end result of this behavior is i feel sorry for the children of these people that are doing this because if they have children or if they have a wife or a husband because god cannot bless he cannot protect he cannot put his shield his wing over people that behave that way so as these things happen augusto they're going to be part of the fallen or their children are going to see great pain i know these are very strong words but augusto that's where we are you don't mess around with god he doesn't play games with this thing. Especially in this time we are at now, things are really beginning to get really dire, really serious. This is not the time to be doing this. This is the time to be seeking the Lord and just listen to the warnings of the watchmen, okay? If you don't agree with it, fine. Just don't listen to it. Don't, don't do what they're telling you. Don't pay attention to it. But just go on, okay? Now, going back to what I was sharing, the Lord continued to give me many strange dreams and visions in the following years. I don't know how many, I've already lost count, how many times I have seen dreams about tsunamis, about the day of the Lord, about uh, missiles striking this nation, about um, power blackouts. Uh, I've talked about it. I know you've talked about it as well, Nathan, about the darkness that is coming. I mean, all of these things warning uh, about this were... One time, even the Lord sent uh, three angels, messengers, to me to tell me specifically, there is great darkness coming. Now, that is the only time I have ever had uh, three angels come to me to deliver a message that important. He also told me that there were going to be, that there was a lot of activity taking place in heaven, which I'll explain that in a little bit. Anyways, I have been seeing many of these things happening more and more. I saw even... Um, not long ago, this year, I had a, the strangest um, experience with a Death Star, the Death Star. I was taken to a beautiful hotel. The Lord gave me the name of the hotel, the Crown Plaza. There were many distinguished-looking people there, scientists, uh, powerful people, the movies and shakers. And the one scientist specifically was talking about a report with all the people. Everybody was paying close attention to it. He was talking about some kind of Death Star. And he kept talking about the Death Star. And I said, is he talking about Nibiru? Is he talking about, uh, you know, uh, the Destroyer? But I didn't know. I wasn't sure. And then he passed out this report to all the people. And it was a very thick report. And uh, 
everybody was looking at it and kind of flipping through it and reading it. And finally, it came into my hands. And as I opened it, it said Death Star Report. And when I opened it, I could not understand most of what was written in there. And I know about science. I know about, you know, uh, calculations. I was an engineer for, for 10 years. I worked as an engineer. So I know uh, equations when I see them. I, I know a little bit about these things, I'm, you know, but I could not understand any of it. It was so rare, so sophisticated. And the names I, I, I was reading, uh, I couldn't understand what that was. It was relating to a dead star. And then there was a page which the Holy Spirit, obviously, inside this dream of the night or a vision of the night, I saw it said that the title of it was Death Star Port, the Death Star Port. Before I had a chance to read it, I had to pass it and uh, back into the hands of the scientist. And he continued talking about explain. Anyway, I woke up from that. I said, what was that all about? Because I knew where I was. I was in a hotel somewhere in this very private meeting of movers and shakers and wealthy people of the earth, powerful people, scientists, and they were discussing this Death Star. And the more I prayed about it, the less I understood it. And uh, I got to the point where I said, Lord, maybe that page I saw was the Death Star report. But the Spirit kept saying, no, it's Death Star port. Anyway, so I just put it in the back burner. I, I didn't know what to make of it. And I, I posted an article on it, you know, in my website. And, you know, I sent it to some people and, when they read it, some people sent me emails basically telling me what that was all about, and, I, and that's when I found out what it was. And it has to do with a project and about the Death Star, which is kind of a, um, a, uh, similar to what uh, was shown in the, um, in the trilogy, I think it was, of the Star Wars. And I, I haven't seen it, so I, that's why I didn't know I haven't seen that. But my sons, when I shared that with him, he said, Dad, I know what that is. I know what the Death Star is. I said, what is it? He said it was in the in the Star Wars trilogy. Anyways, this Death Star is a, a weapon so sophisticated that it's launched into outer space and it is used to shoot down incoming asteroids. It's used to shoot down uh, even uh, enemy satellites. Uh, it's used to shoot down enemy uh, aircraft or incoming meteors or even an incoming comets or even small planetoids. They believe that they can fracture it and shatter it with this weapon. And so someone sent me an article, basically, where it says that at the beginning of this year, there were meetings in different parts of the world with scientists and the wealthy people trying to launch this project. They want to make this thing happen. And that may be what I saw. I don't know. But anyways, for the first time, I understood what this thing was. So now I knew that. For some reason, they were trying to come up with a weapon to shoot down incoming asteroids, meteors, and things like that. There have been some rumors that what happened in Russia several months ago was uh, an asteroid, and maybe it was a, a piece, a fragment of an asteroid that the, the governments of the world tried to shoot at it, or maybe even shot uh, at it with some kind of space-based weapon, and it fractured it, fragmented it. Maybe this is what they used back in 2011 to shoot at um, LNE and uh, fractured it and destroyed it. I don't know. Well, you know, Augusto, the interesting thing about that one in Russia is it was at the very same envelope of time where 2012 DA-14, DA-14, they said it skipped the earth, we're out of the danger zone, and then Russia gets a piece of it. So, you know, that's interesting what you're saying there. Yeah. There are many that believe that that is exactly what happened. But again, I guess we'll never know because uh, we're not going to be told. But um, I do believe that the scientists in NASA know about this. This is one of the reasons why they have shut down all the space shuttle program. They shut it down. They have shut down basically most of those projects in NASA, sending out all kinds of projects to Mars. and All, they, all those things have been put on, um, on the back burner for now because they're concentrating, according to what I have heard and according to some sources I, that I have read, they are concentrating on this incoming stuff. What we are being faced with here, people, is we are getting bombarded by asteroids, meteors. When have we ever seen so many of these things? I was just looking at a report from the American Meteor Society at all the asteroids and meteors. I mean, 
The list goes on and on. It seems like almost every day now there is a fireball. There is one that uh, on September 30, I mean, it over Ohio, on September 29, Alabama, Georgia, September 28th, you know, uh, Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, and on and on. I mean, I am reading it even as I'm doing the show. It's It's incredible. Every day, almost... If not every day, every other day, it seems like there is some kind of asteroid being spotted. Augusto, can you give the website for that so the listeners can go there and look? Because I was there a few days ago, and based on what I heard, they're having record numbers of sightings. I believe one day last week they had like 1,200 reports from people all over the area. Another day, 800 reports. Can you give that website address? Sure. The, yeah, the website is amsmeteors.org. Okay. A-M-S meteors.org and they can go see it for themselves yeah they can see it for themselves and uh, and then if you go there they also have a, a, another page which is called um, it's called uh, well there's another page which I can recommend called the lunar meteorite hunters dot blogspot dot com and there it shows all the meteor sightings and there's a map of the world and a map of the United States and you can see there the the banners are the targets of all those uh, sightings. So, I mean, this thing is getting really scary. Say that one again, Augusto. I'm writing that down, the second one. Lunar, you know, like Luna, Lunar, L-U-N-A-R, uh-huh. meteorite, hunters, dot, blogspot, dot com. Thank you. Okay, and uh, they can go there and check it themselves, how many of these meteorites are being now, these are the ones that are being spotted. These are the ones that, you know, that people can say, here, I saw it right here. It was a fireball going across the skies, okay? Those are the ones that have been seen. The ones that haven't been seen that land somewhere in the middle of nowhere, there probably are many of those as well. So anyways, many of these things are happening even as we speak. And um, the scientists of NASA and this government are very concerned about these things, okay? So... These things have been swirling in my spirit now for the last uh, several weeks, but we haven't gotten to the to the best part yet. As I continue to pray, you know, fast during this time, the Lord began to give me some other things. I received a very interesting experience, a vision of the night, a dream, whatever you want to call it, where I was talking to a group of men. This happened in March 19th of this year. I was talking to a group of men about the end times, and when some of the prophetic events spoken up in the Word of God were about to take place in the near future, they were telling me basically how much time we had to make preparations and decisions. They were discussing this with each other and, and sharing this. So as I was there watching this, the two of them began to quickly make uh, calculations on some kind of device they had in their hands. Whatever this device was, I have never seen anything like it. I have never seen any calculator, computer, anything like it. It was very sophisticated looking, and and yet it was extremely powerful, and they were working. I mean, they were going at it, talking to each other, going real fast. Their fingers were moving really fast, pumping information in there, pumping numbers in. And then as quickly as they started, they stopped and looking at me said these words. Okay, now watch this because this is where it begins to get really hairy, really crazy. They said it will begin in August 2013 and continue through August 2014. And then they paused and said, things as you know it are about to come to an end. Well, (laughs) I woke up right there. I woke up and said, what was this, Lord? What is this they're talking about? And uh, they didn't tell me. Those two men did not tell me. The Lord didn't tell me didn't tell me at least in so many words so I kept praying I kept asking the Lord Lord what is going on why are you showing me these things what is happening now this was in March 19th of this year and then in July 10th of this year I had what I called the vision of the midnight sun now I have seen I have seen this um, called the planet X Nibiru um, I have seen it many times but it was far away. It was pretty far away. This one was the closest I've ever seen. it, And it was in the middle of the night, and I found myself talking with a group of people about things in general. I was inside a house. I was inside a home, and I was talking with the people. 
when for some odd reason I felt I needed to go outside. When I stepped outside, I noticed that there was a lot of light. It was not normal. It was not night anymore, although I knew it was nighttime. I looked at my watch and it said 12 midnight. I looked again, it said 12 midnight. When I looked in the heavens, I saw the sun in the middle of the sky. But for some reason, this sun was kind of orange looking. It was not normal. It was not like our sun. And uh, I went back inside and I told the people, I said, the sun is out in the middle of the night. The sun is out, people, in the middle of the night. It's impossible. I went back outside. When I went, I began to see UFO-like objects appearing all over the place. As I kept looking, the strange-looking creatures began to emerge out of these UFOs. Now, this is not the first time that I have seen UFO appear in the heavens. The Lord has shown me this several times, and it always has to do with cataclysmic events beginning to take place on the planet. It always has to do with the approach of the second sun, of Nibiru, of the black sun, like some people call it, or the tenth planet, planet X. This is the reason why the, uh, the Vatican has built their gigantic telescope in Arizona, an infrared telescope. This is the reason why the United States of America has built also a gigantic telescope in the Antarctic. And uh, this is the reason why they're watching for something. So when I had this experience, I began to see these strange-looking creatures began to emerge from the UFOs. And the moment they began to emerge, they began to hunt and kill people that were outside looking at these things. And uh, the things that I watched were so horrific, I'm not even going to describe on the show, but it was very gruesome. I woke up, I was watching this, and again, I was very uh, shaken by this. The scripture the Lord gave me was Revelation 9, 1 to 4, which is, the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as scorpions of the earth that have power. And he was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men who have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So if you have the seal of God in your forehead, you have nothing to worry about. Now, as these things continue to happen, uh, Nathan, the Lord began to, sh other things began to show me. He showed me about the Norway uh, situation, that there was going to be uh, some devastation in Norway and in the Norwegian Sea. I wasn't even thinking about Norway. I never think about Norway. Norway is the furthest thing from my mind. Um, Brother Augusto, before you continue, can we clarify something? Sure. Because I know that we have listeners from a lot of backgrounds, and there's even some that may be from the metaphysical background, and you know they're waiting for their chariots of the gods. Can you clarify, in your opinion, what you believe these, these creatures are? Are they spiritual? Are they from other worlds? Are they demons, fallen angels, watchers, etc.? Can you clarify that? Absolutely. These entities that, um, that I saw, I believe they are totally demonic. I believe they are fallen angelic entities that the Lord Almighty imprisoned many of them, not all of them, but he imprisoned many of them. The Bible says in the book of Jude and in the book of First and Second Peter, he chained them with chains of darkness in dark dungeons, okay, in Tartarus. They are going to be chained there until the day of judgment, until the day of the Lord, when they will be released. This is what the Bible says. So these are not creatures that are coming from another uh, planet, although they may be associated with this planet X. And I'm no expert in the matter, but uh, I have a reason why I say that. The reason I say that is because I happen to believe that this object came around the time of the Exodus as well, when the children of Israel were in bondage in Egypt, and we all remember the ten plagues. And uh, when they left Egypt by the hand of Moses and the power of God, Remember that uh, they saw many things. One of the things that they saw were giants 
in the promised land. There were giants there, the sons of Anak. And so these entities were there as well. They existed back there as well. There was an explosion of these entities, which, you know, had not been seen as since the great flood of Noah. So all of a sudden, here are these entities again here, these giants, these Nephilims, these fallen angels, and these uh, hybrids. Again, they were on the earth. They are somehow associated with this object that comes every 3,600 to 3,700 years or so. But this orbit has been even uh, corroborated and confirmed by other scientists that I know. I'm not going to mention names, but uh, they're, they're good men, they're Christian men, and, and they have confirmed that, yes, there is this orbit, and there's an object on this orbit about 3,600 years. So this is why I'm sharing that, that these uh, entities are always associated with the arrival of uh, this planet, this object, the black sun. Now, for people that don't understand this thing, and I don't want to get involved in this because, I mean, this is a rabbit hole, and if I go into it, we may not get out of it, and I want to share some of these other things. But I believe that this object is the black sun, is the, is the sun that was worshipped by the Egyptians, that Hitler worshipped, that the occultists worshipped, those ancient people that worshipped the sun. It was not our sun that they were worshipping. No, it was this sun. They called it the black sun. And it's like a dwarf sun. It's like a little brother of our sun. Okay, now, according to many astronomers, astrophysicists, and scientists, this little sun, or this black sun, is now again on its trek of 3,600 years because the exodus happened uh, for about 3,600 years or so. And so when this thing will, will be visible, I don't know. But I have been getting a lot of warnings from the Father that this thing is happening, it's going to happen, it's imminent. When, I don't know. But uh, we are beginning to see signs that this is uh, approaching fast. Okay, Augusto, you know, you said you saw the UFO and those creatures came out in your vision. I want to just make one comment because uh, I happen to be right in the middle of some research right now and, and on my programs. Uh, listeners, you know what I'm talking about. We've been talking about these the last several sessions. But and I know that some people have a problem with the Book of Enoch, but it was quoted by Peter and Jude, as you mentioned. And in the Book of Enoch, chapter 10, verse 12, when it talks about the uh, 200 watchers that came down and took human wives and God punished them and, and he told Michael, go bind them up and put them under the, the pit, as you mentioned a few minutes ago. It says right here in verse 12, bind them fast for 70 generations under the hills of the earth until the day of the consummation of their judgment and until the eternal judgment is accomplished. And then a few chapters later in chapter 15, it says these spirits shall then rise up against the children of men, against women, because they will proceed from them in the days of slaughter and destruction. So, as you quoted from the book of Revelation chapter 9, in fact, uh, earlier in, in verse 1 of chapter 9, it mentions the locusts pouring out of the pit. So those are creatures coming out, demonic creatures that God's going to loose. And then a few verses later, you have the four angels that have the key, and they allow these other creatures to come out. So God has demonic spirits chained up under the earth, and he's going to allow them to be released at some point, in the future, and he's going to use them as some of his tools of judgment. So is that what you saw, Gus? So these things are going to be bloodthirsty, and they're going to have no mercy. And we can even see glimpses of their attitudes. In Isaiah talks about these these things that are going to come, and they're, they're going to have no mercy. They're going to ravage women, run people through, dash children on the rocks. They're going to be very imposing. Uh, my friend Larry Taylor, he even sent me a document uh, a book, as a matter of fact, that I'm not even finished. It's huge. It's got like 6,000 pages from a Russian scientist called Moldyshev. And he has done a lot of um, archaeological uh, trips and digs. And he discovered caves in the east where he basically saw giants in suspended animation. And uh, all the Chinese uh, military men that went in there, they all died instantly. And so I haven't finished the book, so I cannot speak about it yet. But uh, I'm telling you, these things are real. There are caves. The Bible talks about them, the uh, gates of hell. There are gates of hell in the earth. Uh, Jesus talked about it. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. When he made that comment, 
he was standing in front of the gate of Baal. And uh, this, I have photos of this gate. I have pictures of it, and uh, it is fascinating. But that is where he was standing. He talked about the gates of hell. There are little gates of hell right now on the earth. And um, I don't know where they are. One of them was there where Jesus made this declaration. But there are many other. And uh, there are some people that have said that the Bermuda Triangle here not far from where I live is one of those gates. It's one of those gates that there are... Uh, there is uh, the old uh, city of Atlantis is sitting at the bottom of the ocean there, the Bermuda Triangle. And, of course, there have been many reports of planes. When they fly uh, over that region, their, their uh, instruments go crazy, okay? And which is the same effect that uh, people report whenever a UFO goes over them their cars and their 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 you know their watches and all their electronic equipment goes berserk and so this is signals that there is some type of electromagnetic uh, field activity deep on the bottom of the ocean there in Bermuda Triangle and there are many other many other areas what i'm trying to say is that as we get close to this time those gates of hell are going to be opened okay now i don't i don't believe that god is the one that's going to open them like you said, Nathan, he is going to allow it to be opened. But the ones that are going to open it are, I believe, the evil men of this world, the cabal of this world, the elite of this world. The Mayan elders of this world? Yeah, yeah, those people that want to kill us, you know, those, those people that say we need only half a, a billion people on the earth. Yeah, that kind, those people, along with... This uh, draconian, these hybrids, these uh, entities, this is what I'm talking about. Um, the films, whatever you want to call them, they exist. They're real. And uh, they are in cahoots to uh, release all of these uh, entities. They're going to release them in the end time for the Battle of Armageddon to fight the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I have said all this to bring you to the present, okay? And that is. I have been reading, you know, and I have been reading a lot of dreams and visions. Everybody sends me, you know, uh, sister so-and-so had a dream about this, brother so-and-so had a dream about, you know, and like most people, I read it, I say, okay, and I put it, you know, I file it in my brain, you know, and I don't make much out of it unless the Spirit convicts me and uh, He reveals it to me. Cause I walk by the revelation of the Spirit. I don't walk based upon what anyone has seen or what anyone has heard from the Lord. If a man of God tells me something, I receive it. And then and I pray over it, and I seek the Lord, and if I get a confirmation, then I know. But you cannot take something and just run with it. You have to check it first. You have to discern it. So this is what I'm telling you. You hear what I'm sharing. You pray. You take it to the Lord in prayer. You discern it, and then you make up your own mind, okay? Don't just take what I'm saying and uh, accept it as fact. So, you know, I began to hear some things going on in Puerto Rico. I began to receive some emails about that. I began to receive emails about the things that were happening in Puerto Rico, and I thought it was kind of strange, to be honest with you. I thought that, uh, my Lord, I mean, there are FEMA people there. There are military personnel in Puerto Rico. And so that really struck uh, in my spirit, because this is something that is not normal. So I began to investigate it. And uh, the more I investigated, the more I realized that this was true. I began to hear reports from Puerto Rico. From, For example, I listened to a report from the news station there called Telemundo, which can be listened to here in the United States, the Spanish channels. And <clears throat> I watched Telemundo, and basically they were saying in Puerto Rico the same things, that uh, in the newscast that um, there were a lot of body bags that were being seen transported into Puerto Rico. I heard figures of anywhere between 750,000, upwards of 2 million. FEMA coffins, body bags, millions and millions and millions of MREs, water bags, uh, military uh, equipment, and military personnel. And they were moving into the mountains of Puerto Rico in the center of the country. So when I heard these things, it really, it really began to catch my interest. And I, and I said, there's something going on here, because as... Most of you know, FEMA Region 3, this has been going on now for several weeks, maybe even months. There have been reports that in FEMA Region 3, there's a lot of activity. FEMA Region 3 is Delaware, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia, 
and Washington, D.C. I think that's it. And um, they're taking all kinds of uh, body bags, FEMA coffins, MREs, water bottles. I'm talking about in the millions. And uh, personnel and uh, armored vehicles. People are seeing convoys and trains of armored vehicles going into that uh, region of FEMA 3. I started connecting the dots, and I said, wait a minute, something here is wrong. There's something off. Then leaks began to come out all over the place. I began to get uh, reports from people in Puerto Rico saying that one-fifth of the government employees were sent home from work. Two reason places are closed, lots of strange things, and that also reported that FEMA is going to be given an interview to Puerto Rican news stations regarding the concerns going through the island. I began to read all these kinds of things. I, I read another report that someone sent me basically saying that Radio Isla 1320, and also they, they heard it in, in other stations, that Puerto Rico was preparing for an extraterrestrial event and also for near possible earth collisions that would produce earthquakes, tidal waves, and that these things would accompany these events. Also, the radio host, Andrew Alvarez, Chardon, who has been reporting to his audience that there is increased military activity and UFO activity there, he says also um, that they have seen a blue object, a large blue object in the skies that is causing blackouts near the Vacardi distillery. And uh, there was also reports of uh, activity, military activity near Ponce. And uh, many have seen armored vehicles being escorted by police to Camp Santiago in Salinas. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more about this. So I began to see all these things, and then I come across a, a brother in Puerto Rico. The name of this brother is Ephraim Rodriguez. And, uh, and I'm not going to get into... Uh, I mean, there's people out there, and they're already saying that the guy is a false prophet, and this and this and this and that. Listen, I'm not going to touch that. I'm not going to get into it. People say whatever they want. I'm just going to go by what I saw and by what I felt, okay? And you can do with it whatever you want. You don't want to hear it? Fine. You want to throw it away in the garbage? Fine. I'm just going to tell you what I have seen and what I have reported. And uh, if you want to throw stones at me, go ahead. I don't care. At this point, I don't care anymore. But this man, Ephraim Rodriguez, he had a vision from the Lord back in 2010 and where the Lord showed him that there was going to be an asteroid strike the western part of Puerto Rico between the island of La Mona and uh, western Puerto Rico. The island of La Mona is an island between Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. Now, according to this man, he sent letters to NASA and he has also spoken with them and to the scientists from NASA. And um, the scientists from NASA basically told him that there is indeed going to be an event. They were reluctant to share with him these things, but he pressed them, and he told them that he knew, because according to him, he knows the mayor there of uh, Puerto Rico. And so he said that the scientists, the NASA scientists, told him that, yes, that the NASA scientists are very concerned about a possible meteor strike near Puerto Rico in the Caribbean, and that if he hits there, he's going to cause a tidal wave of approximately a thousand feet high, a thousand feet high, and uh, it's going to destroy and cover it in water the western third of Puerto Rico and all the outlying uh, shorelines of the coasts of Puerto Rico, plus the Dominican Republic, Cuba, Central America, the Caribbean, all the islands in the Caribbean, and possibly the Gulf Coast and the eastern seaboard. And uh, he said uh, that he was told by these people that they have maps already of the destruction that this would cause and uh, that they have uh, calculated, again, these are rumors, okay, that the death toll could be, uh, in Puerto Rico, it could be from 750,000 people dead upward to 2 million. That is why they have all the body bags there in Puerto Rico, because Puerto Rico is part of the United States, as you all know. Uh, they also said that they have statistics and uh, the numbers that show that if this event happens, as they are predicting it may happen, the death toll in the Caribbean, in all the countries on the islands of the Caribbean and the eastern seaboard and the Gulf, it, it could be upwards of 46 million people dead. Augusto, that gives me pause. I mean, those are incredible numbers. They are. They are. And uh, I have, I cannot share everything. But I have a friend that he has sources, okay, within the government. 
All right, folks. Well, it looks like this is going to be the end of News from the Wall 18 Part 1. Please go to Part 2 where you can hear the rest of this program already in progress.